So today we want to show you and talk to you a little bit about the different methods of administration for ozone and just briefly sum them up for you so that you very easily in your clinic um, can begin to utilize ozone therapy in a way that's going to uh, improve the outcomes for you. Um, so we have here a very simple treatment guide that's made uh, for veterinarians. It's based on a few of the major ozone works that come to us from Europe. If you have purchased equipment from us, you'll receive this treatment guide. Um, and you can take that and look at it and learn a little bit about what the dose, uh, doses are for the animals, um, depending on which method of administration you're going to use. So we're going to start out with major autohemotherapy. Um, major autohemotherapy is basically withdrawing a small amount of blood from the animal um, and you're going to be infusing ozone into that blood um, and then returning it to the animal. Now, uh, actually before I get into a little bit of the details on that, let's just run through what they are really quick. So that's major autohemotherapy. Next we have minor autohemotherapy, which is um, an even smaller amount of blood, uh, let's say one to two cc's, and, uh, and you're going to mix that with ozone and then you're going to inject that intramuscularly. Uh, the next one is rectal insufflation, um, very simply infusing ozone gas uh, right into the rectum uh, using a, a syringe and a catheter. And then we have ozonated water and saline, um, that's what we use this for. The, the Falcon H2O system uh, is an easy way to, to ozonate water or saline. You can dump it in the top here um, when you're ready and then connect this um, through a ozone resistant line to your ozone generator um, and, and uh, by doing that then you can uh, bubble ozone through the water or the saline and then use that either to put it subcutaneously to lavage um, to do a number of different things uh, there so you have those methods you know, limb bagging um, is another method and it's basically just taking a, an ozone resistant bag and uh, putting that around, let's say, an infection or a non-healing wound or a, an, a diabetic ulcer or something like that, and then pumping ozone gas into that bag and letting it sit for a period of about 10 minutes. Um, and then finally, something that's called uh, prolozone or prolotherapy plus ozone um, is basically used for herniated discs and um, sports injuries in the, in the knees, uh, those types of things. Um, it it's actually helps to stimulate cell growth in those areas. Uh, so, so prozone is another injection and there's a mixture of a few, of different, a few different components uh, and then ozone is introduced into that mixture and then injected right into the discs or around the discs there, discal areas or actually right into the, the knees. Um, so those are the various methods of administration quickly and now um, we'll just briefly touch on a few of those um, and show you a little bit more about how to do that. But we're going to go ahead and talk about um, major autohemotherapy just briefly. Basically when we administer major autohemotherapy we're going to withdraw some blood from the patient. Now we recommend um, about 2 cc's per 10 pounds it's going to uh, right. based on the weight of the patient. So, and, and this is a treatment that you'll, you'll do maybe once to twice a week uh, for a period of, depending on the indication, um, as few as two and as many as 10 to 20 um, treatments. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the patient, we're going to draw up the recommended amount of blood from the patient. And then we're actually going to go and we're going to draw up ozone into another syringe. So we're going to have ozone and we're going to have blood. Um, um, you're going to then take that syringe with the blood and the ozone and simply go to the patient and reinfuse the blood. Uh, that's a major autohemotherapy. Now, minor autohemotherapy is similar to major autohemotherapy except for it's a smaller amount of blood. We're talking one to two cc's of blood. 
Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to take that blood uh, that's been infused with ozone and you can infuse it in the same way that I talked about doing with major eye hemotherapy. So you get your blood and your ozone mixture in your syringe and you hook, hook that to a needle um, and then you're going to just inject that intramuscularly. So uh, depending on where you're wanting to stimulate an immune response or where you're wanting to, um, to see uh, ozone absorbed into the tissue, um, you'll, you'll do it that way. So the next method of administration is rectal insufflation. Um, basically, very simply, we're going to go drop our ozone from our ozone generator. We'll get a syringe or an ozone insufflation bag, depending on whether it's a small animal or a large animal. Um, this is an insufflation bag that's ozone resistant. And we'll hook that up to our ozone generator. Um, we'll get the required amount of ozone. And then we'll simply hook a catheter to that. Um, and then the tip of that catheter, you'll go ahead and uh, lubricate with olive oil. Um, it's great to use ozonated olive oil or some sort of oil. Um, and then you'll insert that into the rectum. Uh, there's, there's varying opinions on how far that should be inserted, um, but it doesn't have to be inserted too far um, for to five inches is sufficient uh, and then just infuse that ozone into the rectum and and uh, you're done that's it and so the next one we'd like to talk about is ozonated water saline ozonated fluids if we've gone ahead and percolated that water or that saline with ozone for a period period of about 10 minutes at at a high concentration level 80 to 100 micrograms per milliliter of ozone. If we've done that, then it's ready for us to use. So you would hook a needle uh, to this side if you're going to do this subcutaneously. So if we're going to just put fluid subcutaneously, um, we'd hook our needle up, we'd stick our patient, and then we just turn the, the knob and allow that, um, that saline to flow. And again, our treatment guide will give you basic recommendations as far as the dose on, on those things. Um, um, you can also use water to, to lavage again, and there's different ways that you can go about lavaging, but uh, that's, that's uh, up to you as to how exactly you want to, to lavage. You can use a syringe. Um, there's another method, using a bag. Um, or, or whatever, a sprayer, it just depends. Okay, I mentioned limb bagging at the beginning, and it's, it's very simple. You take a limb and you bag it. Um, so we have here a very simple bag, and uh, if you have a pet with some type of a wound, um, you can insert their limb into that, into that bag, and we do recommend that you would put something over the um, paw area, some sort of fabric, uh, just to protect the bag so that it doesn't get punctured during this process. Um, once that's in there, we'll simply attach the back of the bag, you'll seal that using a Velcro strap or some other means um, to, to secure that, and, and then you will connect the uh, uh, ozone generator directly to this port um, using a connector uh, that we have and and run ozone gas again a high concentration you're probably going to be using like 80 micrograms per milliliter of ozone uh, during that treatment period um, and treating it again for 10 to 15 minutes the last method of administration that I'd like to mention is called prolozone and it's using a, a mixture of a couple of different items along with ozone to treat degenerative joints and arthritis and uh, sports injuries or herniated discs. And basically you'll take that mixture of, of uh, what they call prolo and you will put that in a small syringe um, and you can get that mixture from us. 
can't purchase them from us, but you will give you the recipe. Um, you'll put those into a syringe, and then you will be injecting those in different locations around that joint. And each time you inject, you'll inject the prolo first, and then you'll take this, you'll remove the needle, leave it in the joint, hook another syringe with ozone up to that joint, and and then inject the ozone into that same location. The reason that they put the prolo in first is because it includes a procaine, which is a painkiller, and and that will help to deaden the. Uh, the pain that ozone would incur if we had ozone mixed directly with the prolo mixture. So that's about all there is to it. We've gone through a few of the different ways that you can administer ozone. We're confident that if you just begin using these different methods of administration, you'll see some fantastic results. If you do have questions uh, regarding any of these things, please feel free to reach out to us um, through email. You can write to us at info at o3vets.com or you can call us uh, at our office at 517-925-8148 and we'll be happy to answer any of the questions that, uh, that you give to us. Thank you for watching.